Okay, all right. Open up your Bibles to the book of Ruth. I expect there to be a lot of um, <laughs> and, and a lot of people watching this video since uh, uh, we only have um, such a large crowd today. Or your mom. <laughs> hey, that's good. All right, and Ruth is after the book of Judges. So we're kind of continuing this going through the Bible, and um, I knew we would be a little short today, so I decided we were just going to kind of hit up this one book. And then kind of starting next week, we'll just start getting into the general history of the nation of Israel. And that's kind of when uh, I told you guys wrong last time we were here. Um, next week is when we'll kind of quit going book by book, and we'll just start kind of looking at um, Israel as a whole and the nation after that. But um, but the book of Ruth, this is, this is a small book. Uh, it's four chapters long. But it is, um, in, one, in like my opinion, it's one of the most important books in the entire Bible. Uh, not that you can, like, not that there's really a full-on ranking or anything. It's like, this book stinks, this book's great. That's not really, like, how I mean. But this book, um, and for some reasons we're going to look at towards the end, um, is one of the most important books because of what it teaches. Um, this book starts off, uh, if I'm just going to be really honest with you guys, kind of depressing. Um, it starts off with uh, this uh, this woman Naomi and her husband, and they go off into another land, and they go off into this uh, this land. Um, her husband dies; they have two sons, and then the two sons they they marry women from that land, and then the two sons die. So all of a sudden, it's Naomi and her two daughter in laws, and. We kind of skim over that part a lot of times when we're reading this because uh, it's just like we're just flipping through it. And we really kind of forget about what just happened here. Um, like, look at this from Naomi's point of view, the, the mother in this story. She has lost her husband and she's lost her two kids. And she looks at her two daughter in laws, uh, Naomi and Oprah. Or, Orpah. Orpah. Yeah, I, I always uh, mess that up. Um, Orpa, yes. Um, she uh, she looks at her two daughter-in-laws and she's like, "Listen, I'm going back to my land. I'm going back home. You guys stay here. You you know you stay with your families. You stay with your people." And Orpa, she looks at her and she's like, "All right, been good talking to you. I'm out." And she leaves. And Ruth, though, she has this family connection. She has this love for Naomi, her mother-in-law. That is, that, that's strange. It, it's out of the ordinary uh, because there was nothing wrong with what Orpa did by going back to her family and going back, going back to her people and her gods because that becomes an important part of this too. But she actually, uh, but Ruth has this concern and this love for Naomi, so she makes this decision to stay. And uh, in verse sixteen, and this is really probably the only like single verse that we're going to read this morning. But it says, And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. This is this really unbelievable verse and statement of uh, devotion to somebody, isn't it? You know, she she's telling her, it's like, you know, please don't tell me to leave. Um Wherever you go, I'm there. Um, wherever you live, I'm going to live there too. Uh, your people, hey, that's, that's me. That's my people. And then finally, your God will be my God. You know, this is totally accepting somebody uh, 100% and their lifestyle and everything about them. Uh, so she goes in and she, and she makes this uh, statement that, not only is she going to be connected with Naomi forever, but she is uh, going to also take care of her. That's also what's implied here. And Naomi is a, uh, she's getting up in her years. She's a widower. And in this day, uh, and there's uh, there's some stuff in the story that's like a little culturally kind of weird for us to understand. But in this day, Naomi was in a really bad position by being like this, by being in this position, by being a widow. Um, 
she had no possessions, really. She had nothing. Um, and that's one of the reasons that she made this decision to go back home, where she knew some people, where she had family. So they go, they go back to Naomi's home, and um, there, there's these conversations. She, uh, Naomi is extremely bitter. She's upset about what is going on, uh, about what has happened to her. She, uh, she's lost her kids. She's lost her husband. And, uh, and she's lost a daughter-in-law. And that's, you know, one of her daughter-in-laws has left. And even though she told them to do that, that still hurts, right? You know, Luke, if you told me to leave, uh, you know, even if I left, you'd be brokenhearted, right? Yeah, see, so uh, so when we look at it that way, you know, uh, even with him, uh, even with her telling her to leave, she still missed her. She cared about this person. So she goes back and she's really upset. And they begin to make their life. And to, they begin to live their life in... Uh, in Naomi's home uh, and, and with her people. So what happens is, and this is um, there, and this is kind of where we get into some strange like kind of context and all this. And, and I'm going somewhere with all this, so y'all hang with me, okay? So she goes and they and um, you know they don't have a, a lot of income really or any coming in. Um, and you know this wasn't like today where they just go down to Walmart and they get a couple of loaves of bread and come home and they just grab out on like whatever they picked up at Walmart. What they did was that there was this thing set up in Deuteronomy whenever uh, it, it was talking about a harvesting. Now this is an agricultural people, right? What does agriculture mean? Farming. Farming, yes. So this is an agricultural people and they, they farm. They raise their own food. They don't have the the uh, they don't have the turn of the century Israeli Walmart. Okay, they they, they raise all their food. So uh, they tell uh, Moses and God uh, God through Moses told them in uh, in Deuteronomy that listen, if you go out and you are harvesting wheat, you leave the corners for the stranger. No, and when I say leave the corners, I'm not talking about like acres of fields, but they would leave a little bit. Um, he also said that if you drop some, if it doesn't all get in the basket, leave that sitting on the ground. And it wasn't because God was encouraging people to be wasteful, but it was because he wanted people like Ruth and Naomi to be able to provide for themselves. So Ruth went out into this field of this man named Boaz that was in the area. And, um, uh, and, and the girls don't know what they're missing today. This is one of the biggest love stories in the entire Bible. So, so, uh, so Luke, you can use this with one of those girls. You can just tell them, be like, let me, I'm your Boaz. Uh, so you can do that. But, um, but she goes out to this field and, um, she begins to get the wheat that had been dropped for her and for Naomi to eat. And through this, they provide. And God has provided for them through this. Now, Boaz, and the Bible doesn't talk about many people being good looking. I'll be really honest. Uh, it, it's very, uh, it's not very often, but it does say that Ruth caught Boaz's eye. So, uh, so she either had two heads or she was pretty. Um, so he he was kind of sitting off to the side uh, of the field, and he looked out and he saw Ruth out in the field, and and he was like kind of punching his buddy in the arm. He's like, look at that, look at her, and um and he asks like, you know, who is that? So what? Y'all see him. <laughs> they couldn't see him. Uh, so uh, so they they look out there and and he sees her and and he thinks she's pretty and he's like okay. Well the next day he tells his boy he tells his like laborers out in the field he's like when Ruth comes y'all drop a little extra y'all uh, you know y'all give her a little bit more uh, weight you know I, I want her taken care of. And he begins to take care of her uh, through this way. And then he actually begins, and then he starts up a conversation with her. And he begins to kind of uh, work with her and help her. Um, and this is where it culturally gets really strange. All right. So you have to kind of understand this because this is not something that we understand. It's not something that we practice. What happened was that um, Boaz, Ruth makes herself available. And, um, and, and, uh, and Boaz is like, okay, I mean, I'm interested. <laughs> and, uh, he, but Boaz was actually distantly related to her. Now that's weird to us. This isn't like, uh, this isn't that kind of area or nothing, but, uh, but it was distantly related to her and, and to her ex-husband, to, to her, uh, to her husband that passed away. He was related to them. 
So it makes it less weird. So, um, but he was distantly related to him. But there was actually somebody in close relation to uh, Naomi's family than the Boaz. And what this meant was, is there was this thing in, uh, in these times whenever, uh, say, uh, hey, we have brothers here. This will work. All right. So, say Jude is married and he dies. Uh, and <laughs> in order for the family line to continue, it's up to Luke to step in and marry his widower. What if I'm already married? Don't tell you. <laughs> yeah, it would probably work better if you were married than you died. And then it would be Jude's case because usually it's the older ones that come in first and, and, they, uh, and they would marry. So, uh, so Luke's dead now. All right, we switch this up. Luke's dead now. Uh, his his uh, his wife is is without husband. They have no kids. There's nobody to continue on the family name. So it's Jude's job to come in and to marry the widow and to provide the family with uh, uh, children and and namesake. <laughs> It is. Uh, listen, uh, it is strange, but it was custom in that day. What would happen if that person's already married? It would go to the next family member that was not married, which is kind of what we see happening here. This guy wasn't married. Also, another thing, and again, it kind of gets into weirdness and stuff like that. They had multiple wives. So, like, if... So, like, in this situation, if Jude was married, he'd be like, well... <laughs> Guess you're number two, <laughs> and so it, 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 that's probably more of how it would be handled. The fact that there was multiple wives, then um, then it would move on to the next. But what happens here is that Boaz he has expressed that he's interested. Ruth has expressed that she's interested, and Boaz knows because of the family line, and then, and then just kind of like the culture of the day and how things were done. That here is. Cousin Matthew over here, and he's closer in relation than Boaz. So, in all honesty, if anybody is going to, and what they called it was they called it would, it was going to redeem Ruth and marry her and give her children, it's going to be Matthew because he's the one that's the closest in relation. So, Boaz, he sits back and he's like, okay, well. I'm going to go and I'm going to talk to uh, Matthew about whether uh, we can, you know, work something out because she's a stranger to him, but I think she's pretty. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go and talk to him and he goes and he talks, uh, he talks to Matthew and he's like, all right, Matthew. So, uh, and, and he explains the story because I, I don't know hundred percent sure that he kind of knew what was going on in this situation. So he explains the story, and he and he explains what's going on. And Matthew, being the shrewd businessman that he is, <laughs> he looks at Boaz, and he's like, man, I've got all kinds of land and stuff, and I don't want to split it with some strange woman. Especially if I die, I want my kids to have it. And so, no, I give up. So they strike a deal. And by striking a deal, Boaz is now the next in line to marry Ruth. And... He can redeem her now. And he's like, and he's pumped. He's excited. So he goes and he marries Ruth. Now, and I know that culturally, like I said, this is kind of a strange story because, you know, we don't deal in redeeming spouses or anything like that. You know, uh, usually if a sibling marries another sibling's spouse, that's looked at as an issue. Uh, like that, that, that's <laughs> never mind. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a felony too. I mean, in some places, uh, uh, you know, there's issues with this. Um, and, and this whole idea of redeeming somebody is strange. Um, because you know what? You know, we are a culture of, uh, and, and rightly so, and I think the Bible teaches this, but we are a culture of we are our own people. You know, uh, nobody is possession. Nobody is something, uh, you know, uh, men, women, all, they have very specific, important values. Uh, you know, in this day, unfortunately, and this is one of the things that I get really riled up quick about, like a lot of the times we misinterpret things in the Bible because women and certain, uh, and certain men even were looked at as possessions in the Bible and not who they really truly were. Uh, it is a creation of God. God in Genesis, God created man and woman in his image, right? Not man and then he, woman was an afterthought. No, he created them both in his image. So 
So this is really strange for us to kind of wrap our heads around. But there's two things in this story that are unbelievably important that you guys have to know moving forward as you read the Bible and just really as uh, being a part of this. Um, one of the things is we move forward in the Bible. Now, in Genesis, we talked about the promise, right? Uh, what was the promise that God gave? It's a I've been that long. It's been like a month. This is like Bible one on one. We got the garden. Okay, in the in Genesis, God promised that He was going to provide uh, someone that was going to crush Satan's head. Oh, God. and through that, every man and woman on the face of the earth would be blessed, right? Mm -hmm. So in that, and we've kind of taken a little break talking about that because we had the nation of Israel being started. We had. You know, and all the different laws and all that really uh, just kind of like crazy stuff. But with Ruth, we start back on this line. You see, what happens here, Ruth goes from an outsider to royal line. Ruth goes from being um, somebody that is uh, kind of culturally, culturally looked down on to being somebody that, see, she marries Boaz. They have this child, Obed, which not many people have ever really heard of him. Obed has Jesse again. That one's a little bit more known because Jesse is the father of someone we're going to learn a lot about pretty soon, David, King David. And then from King David, several generations later, we get Jesus. So this God uses Ruth in this to start a kind of um, to kind of kick back off the line. Uh, it's not that it ever ended. You can look in like the genealogies and stuff and like the gospels and see that it never actually ended. But we don't talk a lot about anybody in the line until we get to Ruth again. So, but but one of the things here is uh, not just that Ruth is a part of the like line of Jesus. Um, and it's also really interesting. And this is one of the things that I love. Um, a lot of people, especially in this day, they would say that Boaz was the uh, was the family member of uh, was uh, in the genealogy of Jesus, but in the but actually in um, the Gospels it talks about Ruth as being it, and that's really out of the ordinary because they would typically just look at the man and the head of the household as the person. So this tells us the importance of Ruth in this. But she goes from this person that's an outsider into the royal line. We get this lesson and we understand this as and like we're going to talk about in just a second. That as believers today, as Christians today, we go as from outsiders in our sin to being a part of God's family and being a part of that royal line. God takes outsiders, God takes sinners, God takes people that do not deserve his love and his grace, and he brings them into his family. He adopts them into his family. And that's this just unbelievable lesson in itself. So we see that Ruth... Uh, goes from what society considered as a nobody, but because of God, she became uh, is a part of this royal line and one of the most important figures in history. So we see this, um, that Ruth does this, uh, that Ruth is a part of this. Last thing, typology. And this is, this is big, and this becomes even bigger as we go in. And I want to make it really big so y'all could read it and make sure you understand. But typology. Does anybody know what this is? Um, no, but that, that's uh, that's tight fist. So that, that's close. But typology is when something means more than one thing. It's like a type of something. Ruth is an actual historical story about a man and a woman, as, as real as us sitting in this room right now. But it actually represents something else. That word redeemed. That's an important word, and not just in this story, but that's an incredibly important word. As you kind of start to understand, like, theology as we get into the New Testament, because us as sinners, remember, we're all sinners in this room, right? Mm -hmm. Matthew, are you a sinner? No? You lied to me earlier about uh, Bible again. study. So you, that's two lies for sure you've told in here. So, yes, you're a sinner. All right, so you are, you are a sinner. Now, are you saved? Yes, okay, so you are, a, you are a sinner that has been redeemed by Jesus. So, Jude, are you a sinner? Yeah, okay, all right. So so you're not going to go to line one, are you? I'm sorry. You can, so, uh, no, but, um, so, but you, you're a sinner. Are you saved? So you have been what? Yes, redeemed. Yes, you've been redeemed. All right, Luke, you draw the you draw the short straw. You get to do it after everybody else. Are you a sinner? Yes. 
Are you saved? Yes. Have you been what? Redeemed. Redeemed. Yes. Okay. So this story tells uh, it tells a type of Jesus and how he saves us, how he redeems us from our sin. Um, and that's something that we keep in mind. And we see this throughout the whole rest of the Old Testament, and we see this in the New Testament. We see this in our own lives today. Ruth is a story to tell us this historical story about how Jesus' line start, or kind of gets re-kicked off in our, in like on the main stage. Because it's been going on behind the scenes. Nobody's realized it. Nobody's paid attention. But this is when it goes from the, the undercard to the main stage and the main event. And it becomes really obvious, again, that this is going on. So uh, it goes from this, and that's important, but it also tells us this story to understand what Jesus has done for us better. You see, there was a debt that had to be paid. We belonged to somebody else, Satan. We belonged to him. And Jesus went and he paid the price for our sins so that we now do not belong to him, but we belong to Jesus. He redeemed us. So that's this amazing, beautiful story that is a type, ology, it's a type of Jesus and what he has done in our lives and what he's done for every person in all of history. Now, this is, this is big, and you can, and there are, uh, this is something like as we kind of move forward, and this is, I'm going to be really honest, this can be incredibly confusing, um, but, and at the same time, people can abuse this. Uh, I know a lot of people who try and find stuff where there is nothing, but there's also really beautiful truths in the Bible that we can understand by seeing it as there are different things that are types of Jesus. And it's some of the ways that we understand who Jesus is, and it's some of the ways that we understand the lessons we have about him. Um, so as we as we kind of move forward through this, I'm going to mention this more and more. Uh, so you can kind of get used to that, that you're going to hear about this more and more as we go through. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, do you guys have any questions like about this specifically? Because I do know that this is kind of this is kind of a rough like this is not an easy topic, uh, definitely. Anybody? All right. Well, um, if you do and you just don't want to ask in front of uh, anybody, message me. We'll talk about this, definitely. Uh, but, but the Book of Ruth sets off this start as we'll get into Samuel uh, next week and we'll start to look at history and we'll start to look at how the nation of Israel begins. Uh, we, or not begins, but how they begin to flourish and how they begin to become the most powerful nation in the world. But, um, guys, glad you can be here. Uh, Pam, I'm glad to have you in here. You know, it's, uh, you know, we're going to keep on keeping on.